Hello and welcome to the latest journalism.co.uk screencast. My name is Alistair Reid and today we're looking at a tool called Timeline.js, a free tool for creating interactive timelines. So it was made by a team at Northwestern University in the States, um, but it's been used effectively by a number of organisations, many organisations, to show how stories or events have unfolded. So here are a couple of examples. There's one from Al Jazeera on the events in Egypt in summer 2013. Um, and here, Time magazine created a timeline on, on the life of Nelson, Nelson Mandela. Um, so as you can see, you essentially create cards with information that the reader can explore along the timeline. As well as the text, you can embed all kinds of multimedia in these cards. So that can be pictures from Flickr or tweets or SoundCloud audio, um, video from YouTube or Vimeo, and maps as well, to give the timeline a more interactive and multimedia feel. So let's get down to it. Um, the timelines are actually constructed in a Google spreadsheet. So if you go to the website, which is timeline.nightlab.com, they have a template laid out for you already, which you can find here. There we go, so we'll select it. And the columns are fairly self-explanatory, but it's important to get them right, uh, as well as the start and end date for the card which can span over several days if necessary, you've got the headline and the main text. The media box here is where you link to the specific media you want to use. It's just a case of adding the URL. Um, and the media credit here goes directly under the image or video. The caption goes slightly further down after that. The media thumbnail is more optional, as the visual media will create a thumbnail in the card automatically. Uh, the type box here is quite important, as it will decide the title card, but just add title in there, and tags the tags like on any other blog post or article. But we want to make our own, so delete all of this and start adding in your own information. For my one here, I decided to go with one of the biggest stories of the year so far, and that's the disappearance of Malaysia Airlines MH370. Now, for the purpose of this example, I use the information on the Wikipedia page, but I stress that no one should ever, ever plagiarize information from other sources, especially one as unreliable as Wikipedia. As a journalist, Wikipedia should never be the primary source for any kind of information. As I said, this is just for demonstration purposes, and if I was to publish this anywhere, I could reasonably expect to be fired from my job, for my career to be finished, and rightly so. But... I've got a handy browser plugin called Table Catcher here, which should be which could be used um, to to capture HTML tables from from all over the web, just not from Wikipedia. <laughs> uh, but I'm going to use that to copy this information into a Google Doc. Again, this is for demonstration purposes, not for publication, and you shouldn't lift anything out of Wikipedia for publication. Can't be sure if it's accurate. Anyway, so Table Capture will export the HTML table into a Google Doc, but as you can see, it's a big old mess. So here's one I tidied up earlier. Uh, very important here is that the date needs to be in the American format. So that's month, then day, then year. Otherwise, it won't display. Um, I've added the headlines and, and organized the text. Um, the URL of various pictures and videos I've put in here and the embed code for a Google map of the area as well. Um, I've also properly credited the sources for each. So the HTML for a link to do that is, is open angle brackets A space href then an equal sign and open quotes just copy the url in again or paste the url in again um, then close the quotes and the brackets stick the name of the source in and then close the code with this forward slash a in the angle brackets and say where you found it um, if you want to add captions thumbnails or tags then go for it but i've kept it basic and just added the title bit in here um, once you're all done go up to file and then publish to web uh, hit start publishing and then copy the link into the generator box um, on the timeline.js site. There we go, uh, and then you can generate the preview. A preview lets you flick through all the cards you've created to check it's all okay. Now, in the interest of brevity, I didn't include pictures in every one, although ideally that would give the best experience to the reader. Uh, then there's the embed code here for embedding it on your site and some extra options for any tweaks that you may need to make or may want to make as well. There are all sorts of extra information on the timeline.js timeline site, um, including a link to the GitHub page if you want to take the code and tweak it for your own needs. Um, and timeline.js is actually one of many tools, obviously, that journalists can use to make their online work more engaging for the reader. 
And if you want to find out some more about these kind of tools and about boosting engagement, we're actually running a session at our next uh, digital journalism conference, News Rewired, which is on Wednesday, the 23rd of July. There's more information in the bo uh, below in the, in the text below the video. Um, but thanks for watching the latest screencast. I hope it's been useful. And don't forget to check back for more guides and tips on the journalism.co.uk website.